this is nine days post-op, uh, <laughs> not the day after. Um, opiates, opiates were my friend. The amount of pain that I was in, I'd forgotten how much it hurts when, when they open the shoulder up fully. Um, yeah, I, I basically was on my back for the last seven days um, without doing a whole lot. So I'm up and about today. So let me take you through exactly what, what they found and exactly what they did to fix it. My first two surgeries in 1993. I had another one done in 2010. And then this, this injury again is from three months ago in Costa Rica, so March 2020. And uh, you can see from the MRI, all the, all the open shiny space is full of fluid. And all the arrows show where tendons are now and where they're supposed to be. Okay, here we go. Right shoulder on June 15th, 2020. So, so the saga continues. You're going back now 28 years or something. Um, so on exam, as we saw in the office, XX extra rotation. But the shoulder seems stable. It's, it's not going in and out even though you, there's no subscap protecting it. You're on your left side in the surgery bed, so here's your right shoulder on its side with the humeral head up above here and then the glenoid the socket down below here. And that's a really good looking joint for all the stuff it's been through. Three surgeries in 28, 26, 27 or 28 years. It looks pretty dang good. The scope's in the back looking to the front. Coming in from the front is this five and a half millimeter canyon that serves as access to the outside and went right through the portals from the scoping from 2009. So let's take a tour of the whole joint. Here's your biceps tendon. And interesting, your biceps, I, I don't remember from the 2009 view, but this looks like it really is part of the rotator cuff, like it's, it's contained within the supraspinatus tendon up here. Way up at the top where it goes out into the groove, it's not. And we were thinking that we may be fixing the biceps as part of it, but that looks awfully good here. So unless we see something bad about the biceps when we get to the outside, we may not have to do anything to it. As I come through to the front of your, and of course you do have fraying of the supralabrum, so we'll trim this stuff over here. In fact, even a little bit of, of what's called pseudogout, that, that calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. Yeah, so we'll, we'll debride that stuff over here. Again, on this completely normal looking joint. So you're gonna come through to the front of your joint and up in front, it's where the, the subscapularis is pulled away. Actually, this band here may include some subscapularis, but it's, it's really coming off the top of the glenoid as if that's more the anterior middle glenohumeral ligament, in which case the subscap might be right behind that. But the question will be what kind of tissue can we find up in front? I'd be happy to use that as part of the repair if we could, because it looks like this is, there's, there's not, a subscapularis bit visible from here. If I look down over the top, this is residual of it. And it does scar down pretty quickly. So, so if we can mobilize this and get it up, I sure will, because it's been about three months since the surfing incident, which is when we assume that this all occurred. If I look up from there, from your capsular shift and probably from the bank cart repair back in the early 90s, we, we probably will see some non-absorbable stitches up along the lesser tuberosity, but there's definitely tissue here, and the question will be, can we tease that out to get a reasonable subscapularis fix? That's my goal. So then back to the joint, and your inferior glenoid and labrum, which looks good. Again, so much of this looks so good, and it's amazing that this is a shoulder that's had dislocations way back to 30 years. Axillary recesses of the armpit side of the joint here, and they come up and around then where the, where the capsule attaches the head. So posterior inferiorly, the back of the head up here, the back of the rotator cuff, will kind of pan up along here. And interestingly, you, you don't really have a, what's called a hill sax defect. There's not a a big dent on the back from having had the previous instability. See if we can see one up higher up in here. But not really. It actually looks pretty good. 
and as they come way up here a little bit of fraying on the undersurface of the top rotator cuff tendon up in there but again not bad and now we're back around to where the biceps is again and then back to the top of the glenoid there's a super glenoid fossa up above here so mostly what we're seeing is, is just this frayed superior labrum on an otherwise quite good looking joint posterior posterior inferior labrum there so not a whole bunch of stuff we have to do I'm going to come in and shave this super labral tissue up here so here's the shaver with their name on it and this blade oscillates back and forth and so I can just pull a section through this and I kind of want to take out that little bit of pseudogout that's right up there also that, that can be a source of post-operative inflammation in a joint and since it's not in anything structural or con concerning I can sort of just shave it right out with the fraying of the labrum you can see a little wisp of, of calcium come out of it a little bit more up in here So sort of posture superior there. So there. And then hook again, please. Actually a little bit more around the back up in here. Yeah, you can see if, if I rub it, it's almost like a little snow globe, this little bit of calcium kind of c c comes up into the fluid and we can wash it through so shaver again come around and get this business up in here So many people have this embedded in their actual joint cartilage, in which case you can't take it out with impunity, but where this is sort of adjacent to the joint, but not on the joint surface, I don't think it hurts at all to trim this out, and it's probably in fact, very beneficial for your shoulder to get that out of there. And curious that it's just in that one spot. We didn't see it elsewhere. Actually, you have a little, now I've said that a little bit on the undersurface of the supraspinata, so not just in one spot. So I can't use much of this because this is your supraspinata. I roll that out a little bit, but just for it frayed at the edge here, I'll trim it. Just a little bit up in there. Yeah, but basically I want to I leave that be because that is a crucial part of your shoulder. Let me come back and look once more at this. And hook again, please. Yeah, so right up here, this is the tissue we want to mobilize. Okay, we will see. So we'll stop the video here, roll you back, sit you up, go through that anterior scar you have, and see what we can do to fix that. So pause and off on the video, please. So I've been, been out of surgery for a few hours, and I got to come home. Um, I'm on painkillers, but they they went into the shoulder first, 
first with a camera then they opened it up and um, so in addition to the subscapularis tendon I also ruptured the bicep tendon and it had shifted so they were able to repair everything so the surgeon was was able to go in and 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 put things back where they go so I have kind of a long I'm in, I'm in this isolator in public at my sleep for six weeks and um, then I start I can start physical therapy in earnest but it looks like um, I will make a full recovery and get get all the range of motion and the, uh, the ability back in the shoulder I hate the opioid painkillers uh, while they're great for for knocking back the the pain I got the junky itch and my nose super itches <sighs> so this is my first day post-op so surgery was yesterday um, the the blo nerve block wore off and so it feels like a uh, an offensive lineman slam me in the shoulder um, I'm on painkillers and a little bit of Benadryl to help with the itch. <clears throat> so worth it though. They were able to fix it and I'm going to have a working shoulder again, which will be nice. And to add, add some extra goodness, um, I have company today. So the puppies are allowed to hang out with me and they're being very sweet and very gentle and very lazy. So this is night four post-op. Uh, I know absolutely I had some stuff done now because everything's worn off, all the, all the blocks and everything. And uh, I can definitely feel both my pec and my bicep. It's all bruised where they've gone in. Um, I didn't sleep great last night. Hopefully I sleep a little better tonight and have a better day tomorrow. I was, I was kind of out of it today. But I, I think I'm on the mend, so hopefully, hopefully I get some good sleep tonight. So we're at the doctor's office for my first post-surgical appointment. I took the dressing off. So they went through the old scar, made it just a little bit bigger. No staples, actually, a dissolving stitch. And they didn't have to cut any, any of the tattoo, any tattoos. Apparently I have a couple. Um, and yeah, I I'm, I'm, have another appointment in five weeks, but everything... Everything looks good. My neighbor, who's also a beekeeper, uh, called me today uh, and said, Hey, there's a swarm happening between our two houses. So I got up out of the chair and went outside and looked, and sure enough, there's a big swarm happening. So this is about 20,000 bees. And uh, I just, I was super impressed. And so we couldn't figure out whose bees they were. I mean, you know, we thought, well, somebody gave us a present. There's nothing I can do about it because of the arm. But I mean, you know, maybe they could, maybe they could have some new bees for free that just showed up in their yard. And I mean, I checked on my bees like nine days ago, 10 days ago, and they were fine. You know, I, I wasn't that worried about them. I put a little bit of fondant in because I knew I wouldn't be in for at least two weeks. Uh, I had a thought, and I went and I checked the, the hive in the back. Gone. No guard bees, nothing. The, so my bees, that is my bees that have swarmed. Like, all of them. Um, all 20,000 plus of, of my girls um, have decided to, uh, to move out of their current digs and find a better living situation. I don't think they're coming back. Um, a, there's no brood, and B, whatever honey there was, they have opened every single honey cell, sucked all the honey out, left debris everywhere, um, and uh, th they moved out of their little condo I made them, um, and they've moved on. Uh, now, I want to go catch them, to put a ladder up and to put a veil on and just to drop them in um, a trap and um, with this going on, that's not going to happen. And if I put a veil and a suit over all of this, 
and climbed on a ladder anyway, my wife would put a bullet in me. Not not like my knee or my ankle though. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. She She's already tired of taking care of um, something else I've done. So no, it would be to eliminate any more stupidity on my part and to collect a large insurance policy, I'm sure. So I won't, I won't be going to get those bees. Damn it. 2020 continues to suck the bag. So my neighbor and her husband came over about nine o'clock with uh, bee veils, uh, nice a, a limb saw, and a plan, nice and they uh, they pulled them down, uh, both of those both of those uh, swarm bulbs, and uh, got them into a tarp, and then got them yeah, into a hive. So it looks it like they have uh, they have their own own free bees, because I, I can't deal with them right now. Mm -hmm.